Hello, everybody. It is Misha Green, DC editor, and I am back again with who I like to call our forever first lady, but she's done so, 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 so much, uh, not only for the District of Columbia, but uh, the nation and world, the great Cora Masters Berry, who is founder of the Southeast Tennis and Learning Center. And we're gonna talk to her today, as well as Justice Bobbitt, who directs the center and is busy and, and ensuring that all the students have uh, everything that they need, as well as some of our students from the Southeast Tennis and Learning Center. And they're gonna talk to us about not only how they've been enriched and influenced from this great program, but there's also a lot that they got going on, like a music video, <clears throat> like uh, Blacks and Wax this year virtually. So I'm super excited to talk about it, but you guys know the drill before we even get into the nitty gritty, we've got to share the stream. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And I hope that you guys are doing the same because remember sharing is caring and we wanna get this information out to the public. So let's go ahead and quickly share this information. Uh, and then let's get it going. Okay. Uh, I'm getting pretty fast at the sharing thing. Let's go. First of all, Mrs. Barry, thank you so much for joining us again. I, you were just on the show talking about a, a town hall, your podcast now, yeah. <laughs> which is all, all going really, really well. The podcast is killing the game. Congratulations on that. Oh, thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Awesome. Stuff. So uh, for those that have not uh, checked out Mrs. Berry's podcast, please, please go ahead and do so. She's she's had the colored girls on there, the political colored girls. Uh, who else? Tamika Mallory. I've had Tamika Mallory on there. I've had um, the mayor of the District of Columbia on there. Uh, obviously, I've had the Blacks and Wax on there. Uh, tonight, I'm having a show. Well, my show is called Nothing New Under the Sun, which came, which really was named by Tamika Mallory because in mentoring a lot of the young people, they 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 talk about the various things that they're that they're going through. And I always say that yeah, it's nothing new under the sun. It's just your turn. So when I was looking for a name for the podcast, Tamika said, You need to call it Nothing New Under the Sun. And so it's an intergenerational show. So what we try to do is it show how things were. Uh, what we did to overcome them, how they interact and intersect with what's going on today. So tonight we have a show and it's titled From Jim Crow to Black Votes Matter. So mm. it starts off with the renowned Dr. Janetta Desch Cole and the Honorable Constance Newman, uh, uh, Constance Barry Newman, who are going to talk to us about how it was during Jim Crow. They grew up during that time. They saw the struggle for the vote, how hard it was, how black people were treated. And then coming in uh, in the next generation is Dr. Joyce Ladner. And for those of you who don't know it, she was the interim president of, of um, Howard and the executive dean there. And she was uh, one of the SNCC people. She worked with my husband, Marion Barry, John Lewis, um, Stokely Carmichael, and they were on the front line fighting to do, uh, you know, obviously get the voting rights and the, and the accommodations. And then we end, not end, but the other end of it is my daughter, Lelania Masters, who is working very hard to work on get, getting black men to vote. And we know that's a big thing going on right now. And she's in the struggle with that. And we need to hear about what that is because that's going on now. And then the, the, to me, the cherry on the top is a young lady named Mary Pat. Now, I don't know if you all know her, but she's a dynamo. She ran for office at 17 years old and lost by 20 votes. She is head of the National Coalition on Black Youth Vote. And she also is working on voting, uh, getting the vote out for just for, um, I'm sorry, for uh, Until Freedom, the organization that Tamika Mallory founded. So we're going from 84 to 21. And wow. see what the story tells. And I think that's the story people need to, to hear, that these things started in, in the 40s and the 50s. And here we are, 2020, and we're faced with the same thing, just a different little, a little twist to it. So that's the show tonight at 8 o'clock. You can see it on YouTube. Facebook Live on the on the uh, platform of rolling out at eight o'clock. Nothing new under the sun. Thank you for that commercial. 
Thank you. Thank you so much for, for plugging in and again for the work that you're doing and getting that information out there. Uh, but obviously the vote is not something that you just talk about on Nothing New Under the Sun or in your personal life or in all the work that you do. You also pass it to the young people. I am so proud of all the work that you all have been doing at FNLP. Um, but let me tell you, students, you guys are rock stars. Oh my goodness. I loved the footage that I've gotten to see already from the virtual Blacks and Wax this year. Um, but I, I, I really want to commend you for your work and, and just talk to you about what you do at SETLC. But before I talk to the students, let me first uh, talk to Justice and, and see what she's been busy doing and how you guys got to a place of such professionalism uh, with Blacks and Wax. So we knew that Blacks and Wax is something that absolutely had to happen just because of um, the topic and how um, dynamic and how important it is to vote. Um, so we have been preparing for this actually since um, the beginning of last year. And we usually start preparing the kids in January and then they have a um, showing at the Kennedy Center and at the ARC in March. Of course, in March, um, literal days before we were to um, start, um, everything shut down because of the pandemic. And so um, we we pulled all our heads together and our um, executive producer, Miss Sheba Haley, um, she, she came up with a vision for us to be able to do it virtually. And um, we set it up and we had a lot of help from our friends over at the ARC with setting up the green screen and we brought the kids in one by one um, to, to film it. And we pushed it together and made it a show. And I'm so, 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 so proud of the finished product and what it became. I mean, it's so amazing. And obviously 2020 was already a voting year. Um, but the, the way it hits now, I, I think, you know, it resonates in such a way that it may not have resonated in the same way in March when it was live. I mean, it is so, it, it, is so powerful. Um, and to know that these students were working on this and cooking it up and having it ready to go virtually um, after preparing to do it um, live is, is quite inspiring. I gotta, talk, I gotta talk to the kids. I gotta talk to the kids because you guys are, are, are the stars um, and, and the vision of it. Uh, well, why don't we start with, with Zora? Zora, can, can you talk to us a little bit about what your experience at Southeast Tennis Learning Center has been um, and, and what's going on with, with Blacks and Whacks? Let's see. She might have a little bit of a little bit of a lag. Zora, are you with us? Okay. And it's looking like it's a bit of a lag. Zora, uh, go ahead and she take. Looks like she looks like she. Are you muted, Zora? I might just be muted. Are you on mute? Can you hear us? There yeah, you go. Yeah, I can hear you. Fabulous. Okay. <laughs> so Zora, tell us about uh, your experiences with SETLC. So I've been here since I was two years old and I've been in Blacks and Wax since I was two years old. Um, and my first role was Queen Efertiti and then I was Misty Copeland, then I was Rosa Parks, then I was Naomi Wadler, and now this year I was myself and Ida B. Wells. I mean, it, it's so amazing because, Zora, I have seen you in a couple of the different performances over the years, and so one to see you uh, grow in, into this, uh, you know, amazing artist and, and speaker um, it, it is super cool. But you've played all these different roles. And, and this year, you got to highlight one of my uh, sheroes, Ida B. Wells. What were, what were some of the things that you learned um, from, from all the characters, but particular this year, in particular this year? Um. I learned about Ida B. Wells that she was a suffragist and her office got burnt down because of what she was writing about. She was writing about lynching and she was also a journalist. So I learned a little bit about Ida B. Wells, which was pretty cool. 
Yeah, I, I love her. If there were no Ida B. Wells, I'm not sure I'd be able to talk to you guys today. So um, awesome that you're highlighting some people that, you know, not everyone talks about uh, wonderful uh, barrier breakers like Ida B. Wells. She is sometimes in sort of the back burner of our history. And yet she was huge as a suffragist and huge as a journalist. So I'm glad that you got to learn more about her and bring her to life. Malachi, what's going on with you? How are you today? I'm good. Awesome. And, and tell us about your experiences with uh, Southeast Tennis and Learning Center as well as Wax and Wax. This is my second year at the SETLC. Um, this is my first time in Wax and Wax. So I learned about my character that he integrated a pool when he was only 11 years old. Awesome. And remind us who you played just for the people who haven't gotten to see the virtual film. Elijah Eugene Cummings. Indeed. He graduated from Howard University and he served the U.S. House of Representatives for over 20 years. Guys, can we just take a moment to highlight these amazing young people? They're so articulate. They know exactly who they were portraying and they do it in such a way. But look, I'm gonna let them keep talking about themselves because you'll get to see their virtual performance, uh, which really highlights and showcases they know their stuff. Thank you, Malika. I will talk a little bit to you in a second. Vaughn, how about you? Um, I'm doing good, and my time at the tennis center, I've been here since I was seven years old. And How old are you now? 11. Okay, awesome, awesome. So this is my third year doing Blacks and White. And the first year I did, I played as, I portrayed Muhammad Ali. And the second year I played as the young John Lewis. And this year I've been playing as the older John Lewis. And of course, last year when we played John Lewis, you had no idea what would come of his life this year. And obviously a wonderful life well lived. I've gotten to talk to Mrs. Barry, who knew Congressman Lewis for many, many years and was a dear friend. Um, but what were some of the cool things that you learned about Congressman Lewis? And did it mean anything more to you after his passing this year? So it, at first, when he um, passed away, I was actually so sad. And so I, I thought I had to step up and work harder to be his character and honor his legacy. And, and Malachi, how about you? I'm gonna toss that same question to you because we know we lost uh, the great Congressman Cummings last year. Uh, what was that like for you? Uh, bringing this man's story to life, someone who was living in, in your life and time and really made such a difference. How was that bringing his story to life? It took a lot since he died. Um, I had to study online so much. I had to watch so many videos, study them, then write papers about, about him. Wow, you, I'm, I'm so happy you mentioned that, Malachi, because I was gonna ask Justice and, and Mrs. Mary, what is the prep like for this? I mean, they're consummate professionals. I have a degree in theater, and I was sitting there looking at those students like, how do you get them to this place? What is the prep like for that? Well, let me just say that uh, you sound like the mayor. Uh, she came one time to the Kennedy Center and she was watching the show sitting next to me and she kept saying, who are these kids? And I would, and I would say to her, you know, you know, whispering, the show's going on and I'd say, it's, it's our kids. And then maybe 10 minutes later, two or three kids later, she would say, no, where did they come from? <laughs> and so, so finally I said, Miriam, these are not ringers that we bought in from Duke Ellington. These are our everyday kids, the ones who play tennis, the ones that you see when you come to um, lift every voice. Or she says, but I said, I'm telling you, these kids come out of Southeast Washington and they can compete anywhere on any stage with anybody. 
simply because they decided at some point that they could do it. And many of them started off with, I can't do it. I won't do it. It. There's no way I'm going to do it. And they went from there to study, research, memorization, actualization, understanding the script, to performing the thousands of people on the Kennedy Center. We At the Kennedy Center, we went originally 14 years ago. We did it in a library because I was trying to teach the kids Black history. And I just said, just because I'm no longer a political science professor doesn't mean that I can't continue to teach children about our history. But I wasn't very successful and bringing them in the room and showing them videos. They'd eat the popcorn and then they'd leave. So one year I said, well, let's just try to act it out. And the rest is history. So yeah, it is amazing that they are, but they, but I think the most important thing, when you see Black Blacks and Wax virtually or any other way, you see young people who have decided that they can do anything in life. Because if you can get up on a stage with all of that, information that you have to memorize and deliver it in a way in which you move people, inform people, and excite people, and entertain people, you can do anything. I mean, mm -hmm. one of our kids right now is running for at-large city council. One of our kids is running at-large at for a school board. They learned how to speak. They felt good about themselves. So it's not just what they do in terms of what you see, but it's also what it does for them. And we choose them, and, 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 and um, Justice can talk about the process, but I, I I understand why you think it's amazing because I think it's amazing every single time, especially, you know, how it starts. And, you know, it's not an easy process. We don't play with these kids at all. And if they can get through the blacks and wax process, that's the other one. The drilling, the, you know, they have one week. They have one week to memorize this script. I don't care how long it is or how short it is. You have one week and then no, no more paper. Put the paper down. So, I mean, we put them under pressure. And that is really great because guess what life is? Mm -hmm. Pressure. And if you can't handle the pressure here, then you can't handle the pressure the next day. Whether you can survive blacks or wax, you can survive anything. Ugh, you guys are, are so lucky to get these gems all the time from Mrs. Berry. I, I wish if I wouldn't get distracted, I should be like writing all of these on my phone right now. Um, but so, so lucky to have somebody who really wants you guys to grow and learn and not just you know, watch the Department of Literature documentary and finish your popcorn and moving, but really learn about these people and embody them so that you can walk in their footsteps. Uh, I actually had a little bit about the justice just so I could talk about how prepared these students get. This has to be about two or three years ago. Uh, there was an event out at the Southeast Tennis and Learning Center where former um, First Lady of the United States, Hillary Bob Clinton, was uh, speaking there and, and, and talking about the work she was doing at the Rodham Institute. And I, Mrs. Mary, always put up the press with delicious facts. <laughs> so I happened to quickly see that to get, I think, like, it's like cheese and, and uh, a, a juice just so that I could be focused for the rest of the event. And I hear, hello, my name is Hillary Brown Clinton. And I don't know if I can keep the person doing this introduction, but I had just sat away for two seconds to get my juice and cheese. And it was the black and black student. <laughs> I'm thinking I'm missing the first lady. And it was a student who was bringing her to life and it was amazing. Um, and, and, you know, obviously um, Secretary Clinton has a recognizable voice. The best student had her pinned to a T. Um, and, and, and so just again, it goes to show how impressive these students truly are. Um, thank you for, for sharing the talent. And Secretary Clinton did eventually come out. <laughs> Don't think that I got set up. She did actually come out afterwards. Uh, but Justice, can, can you tell us a, a little bit more um, uh, of, about how you get these students ready? And then what that shift was like, um, getting them prepared for the green screen. So yes, these, these scholars definitely rise to the occasion. I think that that's my favorite part of the whole process is them just 
learning and realizing how talented they actually are. You know, because, you know, we take kids, uh, we don't turn anyone away. So we have two different parts of Blacks and Wax. We have our vignette, which is um, more in a play format. And we have our museum, which is our um, still Blacks and Wax figures that come to life. And so we turn no one away. Everybody who's interested gets a part. And um, like Mrs. Barry said, um, we start, it starts with really the educational aspect of it. They have to do a report. Who is your character? What do you know about them? You know, they go into our computer lab and they do a full report and learn about their character. After that, they receive their script and they're given um, not a whole lot of time to, um, to memorize it. But part of that is because we want them to be committed and we want them to know that this is serious. And then after that, we go into rehearsals and we rehearse every day after we have programming, um, sometimes until eight and nine o'clock at night. Um, and that just shows how committed these kids really are because um, our regular programming features both um, an educational aspect and tennis. So after they get off the tennis court, they um, come down to rehearsal and they do um, their blacks and wax part. Um, now I will say, you know, just to be transparent, sometimes we're not always sure, but again, they, they, they definitely rise to the occasion. So even down to the last day, they'll be down to about 80% and then they'll get in front of the crowds of people and we'll be like, well, who was that that just showed up? <laughs> and they really do, um, they really do do a great job. Um, it's actually probably my favorite, um, event that we do at the center. Awesome. Awesome. And, and what was that transition from preparing them for the stage to a green screen? I mean, I know that had to be difficult, not only from the prep side, but for the students as well. So I want to hear from you, Justice, but then I want to hear from some of you scholars who, uh, scholars turned actors. So on the prep side, it did take a little bit of um, us learning on a curve. You know, everything is new now with virtual. Um, even the way that we're doing this interview is is something that's a little bit unique and something that may not have been done um, before we were in a pandemic. But in order to keep everybody safe, we kind of shut everything down. The building had been shut down anyway, and we created a schedule and brought the kids pretty much in one by one to do hair and makeup. Um, now, the kids, we did host virtual Zoom rehearsals with them and we let them know that it would be different because um, normally the kids are able to kind of feed off of the crowd and they, that's where they kind of get their energy from. So the good thing about doing it virtually was that when they messed up, they were able to do it over again. The, the, the not so good thing or one of the negatives is that they weren't able to feed off of that live audience energy. Um, but it still came together and it, it, it still produced a very good show. And it was a great learning experience um, for us as staff. And it was a, I, I know it was valuable for the kids because now they can do it and drill in and focus and not have each other to feed off of. And they can do it in front of a crowd. Awesome. Awesome. And students, uh, how about you all? Let's start with Malachi since he, he's right on top in, in my view. Uh, Malachi, what was it like? having to prepare and practice and rehearse for something that was going to be on stage. And then suddenly you're in Zoom rehearsals for something that's going to be recorded. What was that experience for you? Well, when I found out that um, we, we couldn't do it on stage because of the coronavirus pandemic, I thought to myself, man, Lax and Wax is canceled. Then all of a sudden, um, all of a sudden, virtually just comes out of nowhere because my mom called me downstairs and says, Malachi, Lax and Wax is not over. And I was like, Mom, what are you talking about? Because I didn't know that you could just do that virtually at the time. Because we, us kids don't really know much about virtual things. It's not just things. kids, we're learning too, Malachi, and, don't worry. <laughs> yeah, well, he's right. But 
even though it's still virtual, I just like being behind the camera and acting. Yeah, I'm sure. Ms. Perry, were you gonna add to that? I was just gonna interject and just say how great Malachi is. This is actually Malachi's first year doing it. And he surprised us from, from start to finish. Um, he just, um, he, the way he comes to life and the way he becomes um, the late Elijah Cummings is just completely awesome. And he's been awesome just from start to finish. Yeah, no, really, really great work, Malachi. And, and, and thank you for, for sharing that story. I didn't even think about the disappointment that you may have experienced when you first found out that it was potentially canceled. So I know when your mom said it's not canceled, you were not there as was ready to keep going. Uh, Zora, how about for you? You are Miss Black and Wax and you were there. <laughs> Um, well, when I heard that it was canceled, just a minute, somebody needs to mute their phone because I hear noise. Yeah, I think it was Malachi, but he got it no. together. Um, I was a little surprised that it was canceled because I've been doing it mostly all my life, so I was a little surprised. Um, and at first I was like, Am I ever gonna get another script again in my whole entire life? Because I was like, Is it ever gonna come back? And then suddenly virtual stuff comes and I'm back in blacks and wax and I had an incredible experience. Awesome. And, and I love that you, your first reaction was, am I ever going to get a script again in life? You know, that, that was the, the panic that we all were experiencing. What is life going to be next for us? And Zora, I got to tell you, so again, like I said, I have a degree in theater and, and you kill the game uh, all the way. But my friends, all who are actors, had the same exact fear. They have all, they're still panicking. How do I you know, work again as an actor? And they're trying to create virtual shows and virtual scripts. So that panic that you had w w was totally right. But thank goodness for the Southeast Tennis and Learning Center who figured it out pretty quickly on how you could get that script in hand again. <laughs> and Vaughn, how about you? Because I know this is year two for you. So you've been able to have both experiences in Blacks and Wax. Or year three, right? Uh, this is year yes. three so Blacks and Wax for you. Okay, yeah. Yes. So it's, it's, I was a little upset as well that we had to go virtual because I think the last day we saw each other, we were doing um, this dance. We were doing this dance on stage and that I was, was so happy about now. it. And also, uh. yes, the finale. And also when I go at like the Kennedy Center and I um, talk in front of the audience and they respond, I get a little bit more confident with my speech. So. I was a little down that we had to cancel it, but then it went virtual. So I had, I guess the positives was that I had my own time to prepare for the script. And yeah, that's what nice. I like. And, you know, I, again, I just want to give kudos to all of you for your hard work. It totally paid off. Justice or Mrs. Barry, can you... Let the people know how they are able to see the hard work of these students now that the finale is completely virtual. Well, number one, what we have found out is that all of our performances are on YouTube down through the years. And uh, we're on the website uh, for the past performances uh, of the Kennedy Center. But for this performance, we are on um, the... Uh, we are on the uh, we're on YouTube. We're on uh, um, YouTube and Vimeo. And Vimeo and Saturday at seven o'clock, we are going to be on television. They're featuring Blacks and Wax and and the video, uh, the promotional video on Blacks and Wax at seven o'clock on DCN and DVN channel sixteen in the District of Columbia. So sit back at seven o'clock on Saturday evening. You're not going out to the bars. You're not going to the club because none of those things are going on right now. So especially if you have young people, but the, the message is for all ages and the way it's delivered, it's not only entertaining, but it's so, so very educational. And if you haven't had a chance to see the whole production, 
you should watch it. Uh, we, we, we deal with people from Sojourner Truth to Kamala Harris. So, and the kids do an amazing job. The makeup, the, the costuming from Janice ranking is authentic. Uh, and the delivery is amazing. And we also have performance of a wonderful song, We're Gonna Be Okay by Frank, by um, uh, Kirk Franklin, but it's being done by the Washington Performing Arts Chilled Young People. So they perform the song and that's done virtually. And I just love that song. So it's really entertaining. So if you wanna see the whole thing and you don't wanna go online, just turn on your television at seven o'clock channel 16 uh, uh, this Saturday. Uh, and watch it. But if you want to watch it at your leisure, you can always get it on Vimeo and you can always get it on um, YouTube. Yes. And I just have to underscore, it is totally worth you all's time. It's only a little bit over an hour and it is worth every bit of watching it and watching the old footage as well, because these students, I mean, I learned something every time I check out the Blacks and Wax. Um, Students, I got to ask you before we wrap up, and I know you're, you're still in class. It's Wednesday, so we got to finish soon. But I have to know, what does it feel like to know that you'll be on TV this Saturday? That is so cool. Uh, Malik, sure. I, I saw that hand raise. <laughs> this is not class. You guys do not have to have to answer like like this is class. I used to be a teacher, but, but I'll give you the past today. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, Mrs. Berry called on Zora first. So go ahead, Zora. Um, it's surprising I get to be on TV, but not as surprising as the first time I got to be on TV, but it was still pretty surprising since it was virtual. I was just expecting it to be some live broadcast and then they tried to figure out how to get it onto something. I didn't expect myself to be on TV. So it was pretty surprising. And let me just say, all every year, you know, back in, as they say, in the olden days, when they, there was actually a TV studio you can go to, every year to promote Wax and Wax, we always had three or four or five kids who would go to the studios at the different networks and perform. But we have never, and I, and I don't know why that hasn't happened. I'm kind of kicking myself. But what virtue has done is something we never did before, which is giving an opportunity to talk with the kids in real time about how they feel. They always say something nice to them about their character. But this is like the third show where the kids get a chance to really express themselves and, and talk about how, you know, how they fare you know, through the process, how they learn, the impact it has on them. I think it's so important, and I'm glad we get a chance to do that. And so that is one of the, as... um as Malachi or um, Vaughn was saying, if you want to look at, you know, nothing is all bad. There's always a silver lining. So I think the silver lining for this was virtual, I think, has allowed us, I know, to sh be shown all over the place. I mean, we have like thousands of people watching this show that would not have watched it if we had done it live. And not only that, but people have, have taken snippets. Like last night I was on... Um, the National Council of Negro Women's uh, uh, event where they were talking about voting headed by Dr. Cole. And uh, in between the performance, I mean, in between the panels and the discussions, they would put up a snippet of Tamika Mallory or a snippet of Zorb doing uh, No Peace, No Justice. And so, and then uh, Melanie Campbell, the National Coalition on Black Civic Participation, today they have a big a big youth, black youth vote uh, panel today at two o'clock. And not only are one of our, our kids, uh, Rajan Rankin being one of the panelists because now he's grown up, he's a Morehouse student, even though it's virtual this year, but they're also gonna be showing snippets of the various characters. So people have taken portions of the show. We sent it to Kamala Harris, she has it now. Jesse Jackson has it now. And, and people are using it in their events. But like you said, you're absolutely right. If we had done this in March, it never would have had the impact that it's having right now because of the hype of what's going on in voting. So it's really, it's really been real better actually uh, as, it, as it relates to reaching more people and getting the message out. And I think that's so important. I mean, again, I cannot emphasize enough to all those tuning in, you learn something, it is such a great sort of thing to tune into and, and, and be reminded of 
as we're in this serious election season. And just to remember the many, many people who paved the way to be where we are today. So I'm really thankful. Zora, was that a hand? Did you have something to add? Okay. <laughs> Did anyone want to add anything before we wrap? All right, I gotta ask Mrs. Berry this last question uh, but before, before we wrap. Um, we are super close uh, to, to November 3rd. Any advice for parents who are prepping young people who don't necessarily have, uh, they won't be able to vote in this election, but any advice on how they can be active and engaged? You guys are getting this from the political science professor herself. Um, how, how, can, how can parents help their students um, as we approach this really important election? Well, obviously, there's the one fundamental thing that I did with my children and my children did are doing with their child is always take your kids with you to vote. Always. That's just part of like taking them to school, all of the rituals that are the rites of passage, take them to vote. Keep them involved in the conversation. Let them watch the news and times when they're talking about the value of voting and share with them the history of it. That is why the show this night at eight on Rolling Out is so important because we always say to our young people, oh, our ancestors died. And that's just sort of like a mantra that nobody really focuses on. They hear it, but it doesn't mean anything uh, like it should. And so tonight I wanted to be able to show both visual and, and verbal examples of why voting is so important. And you have to really pound that in their head so that it becomes as natural to them as going to college or, you know, going to the movies. I'm going voting, I'm going to eat. You know, it's just, it's got to be something that be, that is ingrained. And that starts with the parents. Uh, I'm showing tonight a, a, a clip it that it was in a newspaper of a man, I think in 1950 something, who tried to vote in Mississippi. And because he wouldn't take his name off of the voting uh, list, they killed him. Mm. So I want people to really, I want the kids to really understand that they literally killed our people to keep us from voting or as punishment for trying to vote. So that is what you have. That's why Blacks and Wax is so important. It not only tells, but it shows. It's not just the kids speaking, but there are amazing videos and pictures that's in the background that shows the story. There's music, there's in it, there, there's things that that verbally and, and visually show you the struggle and show you the, the victory. So the, teach, preach, and 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 demonstrate. Show them, take, show them, teach them, and and encourage them to understand that they have an obligation and a responsibility and that it changes their lives. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and Justice, how can we keep up with all the fabulous things going on at SCTLC? Mm -hmm. So to keep up with us over at SCTLC, you can um, always visit Recreation Wish List Committee's website. Um, they have posted um, a lot of our large events that we do there, but we also offer, offer a lot of youth programming. We have both tennis and educational programming both very dynamic programs. Um, and you can learn more of that, more about that on DPR's website, dpr.dc.gov. Thank you so much. Students, I am so, so proud of you. Kudos to you. I cannot wait to see all of the amazing things that uh, are that's in your future. But in the meantime, you gotta promise to remember the Afro newspaper and, and say that we knew you win. <laughs> can you <laughs> Do that for me. <laughs> Everybody together, say Afro New American newspaper. Afro newspaper. Say that together. Afro American newspaper. American thank newspaper. you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Truly, truly love you all. So inspired by uh, all the work that you have been doing, and obviously, uh, we really thank you for joining us today. Congratulations again, and remember to tune in this and amazing scholars and their performance on channel 16, and that's at 8 p.m., correct? Yes, All right. at 8 p.m. this night, I'm rolling out.
Uh, yes, 8 p.m. tonight. Yes. April 16, Saturday at 7 p.m. Okay. Saturday at 7 p.m. tonight for Nothing New Under the Sun. Perfect. Thank you all so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank you for all for tuning in at the Afro Food Black. We have Melanie on tomorrow on the box. don't want to miss it.